All right, ladies and gentlemen, Mr. Sotko here. Welcome back to the channel. Today we're going to talk about some, possibly some new ASIC miners coming out. And we have a whole bunch of other news. We're going to talk about the price here first. So looking at the chart of GDAX, we've seen that uh, a whale purchase literally in the last half an hour. Just as I was actually preparing to record this video, uh, we see a whale purchase. So we actually went up from about eh, 8,900, you could say, to now uh, 9077 so we went up uh, just about $200 here um, from 8869 to 9077 so a little, maybe a little bit over 200 bucks so not too bad and we can see uh, people selling it off here pretty quick um, some of the uh, sell orders coming up here pretty fast uh, to uh, capitalize on that whale purchase um, so whether it's going to last or not I'm not really sure but uh, either way uh, prices are kind of returning from uh, where we were at about 96, 9700. Uh, so not too bad there. We have also recovered about 20 to 25 billion dollars in the total market cap of cryptocurrencies. Uh, we are at about five, uh, 405 billion now. And just a couple days ago, when uh, we went from 9600 to like 8600, uh, we were at. I think about uh, 380 billion, something like that. So not too bad, a bit of a recovery going on. Uh, as you can see, a little bit more green. Uh, the number's not too high at the moment, but uh, we are looking uh, into the green just a little bit. So uh, now I wanna get into the meat of it. Uh, Advanced Miners announced the release of its ICO with ASIC on a 12 nanometer chip. So all this was a problem before uh, the introduction of Advanced Miners ICO company introduced their ICO with ASIC on a 12 nanometer chip. The ASIC yields 28 terahash, twice as much as the S9. One interesting fact about this is that it yields at um, almost the same price and consumption as well. So much, much more powerful uh, than the S9. And this is definitely what uh, Bitcoin sort of needs at the moment, um, as uh, currently uh, you have to stack quite a bit of S9s to really start making uh, decent profit from Bitcoin mining. So 28 terahash a piece, and if they cost the same as S9, uh, there's really no competition at that point. Advanced Miners is a real company, which was founded in 2016 uh, with its central office based in Hong Kong, makes sense, and uh, part headquarters in Tokyo. The company has its mining farm in northern China, and this farm has the world's lowest electricity rate. Very interesting. Uh, so when I said no competition, uh, I guess that was a little bit over an overstatement. Um, now, Antminer, Bitmain themselves, they own the most ASICs in the world. They own the most hash power in terms of, you know, them producing ASICs. Uh, but this 28 terahash would be quite, uh, quite good indeed, uh, twice the amount of whatever the S9 is currently making, which I don't have up at the moment. I'm assuming uh, maybe 15, 20 bucks a day at the moment. Uh, I'd have to actually look up the amount but you can always go to like nice hash profit calculator and you can really see or just any kind of bitcoin calculator and type in about 15 terahash or so or 14 terahash it has been proven uh, to be beneficial for both expert miners and beginners to mine on the advanced miners platform the company's mining sector is driven by renewable energy and seeks to develop further in that sector one eye-catching development of the advanced miners is the introduction of the next generation of mining boards equipped with 12 nanometer chips in the first half of 2018 so this development is set to, to row by the end of the first half of 2018. So we got a little ways till they uh, till they come out. Now many people can reap the benefits of its advanced miners mining platform, and you can benefit too. The process is simple. The company initially produces and distributes ASIC uh, of new generation among its investors. Alternatively, uh, the company sells hash to their investors for the token. Um, after this process, advanced miners will open the, their online platform to everyone who is willing to trade hash. The ACM token would uh, grow because that is the only accepted payment method. Investors who keep ACM token will enjoy the maximum benefits. So not too bad of an idea here, uh, maybe to pick up ACM tokens whenever it, um, it goes live here. So advanced miners ICO, let's see if they got it. Let's, let's check out their ICO. I have not signed up to this ICO. This is not a shill. Uh, so the pre-sale starts in three days, 23 hours. Okay, not too bad. Current price is just seven, uh, well, we'll get 70 cents a coin. Um, and pictures of their miners that look exactly the same as every other single miner. That's pretty great. 
Uh, but so not, maybe not a bad idea. Uh, 70 cents a token now could uh, become several dollars uh, later. So not too bad. Hey, no, I don't want to chat. Hello, hey, how may I help you? Uh, I like mustard. There we go. I got him good. I got him real good. Anyway, so not too bad of an idea there. Uh, so the ACM, if, I guess it's just advancedminers.io. Advancedminers.io, indeed. So uh, I will actually look into that a little bit more and uh, maybe make a video on that if it, uh, if it looks good. So I'll take a look at it and um, see what I think about it. So 70 cents a coin now could, could equal a few bucks in, in the future. Uh, the company gradually moving towards the realization of seven nanometer chips in the very near future. This is as close as the end of 2018. So seven nanometer chips would be pretty insane. Uh, might be able to get um, 40, 50 terahash out of something like that, depending on how they make it. Uh, this is an interesting article. Data breach exposes thousands of investors in a John McAfee-backed cryptocurrency. Uh, I know so some people say McAfee, McAfee, uh, uh, McAfee, whatever. Uh, details on the data breach. The sensitive information exposed uh, by the breach includes uh, full names, wallet information, and even scanned photos of ID documents. More than 25,000 investors were affected by the leak. Apparently, the team at Bezop had failed to secure a MongoDB database, thus opening the way for hackers. Bezop uh, is a startup cryptocurrency company with its own blockchain-powered e-commerce app platform. <clears throat> and, of course, John McAfee backed this because he backs anything that makes him money and i guess i guess that's okay but it's still pretty lame uh conflict uh conflicting reports so uh Bezza posted an announcement with via its medium account stating that it was already aware of the leak and that the issue had been resolved since january so according to the announcement the platform had suffered a ddos attack which <laughs> of course they always announce that it's a ddos attack every single time i would actually hate to have to run a um, a platform like that and actually be DDoSed and, and then have to tell everybody, hey, we're being DDoSed right now, so don't worry about it. And then everybody would think that I was exit scamming or that somebody was exit scamming or my company or this. So I, I really feel for them. But when you just say that you're suffering a DDoS attack to cover up, uh, you're really killing the crypto world by doing that because now that excuse is just, now it's just an excuse. It's not an actual thing that's happening to most people. Uh, so a DDoS attack which had exposed some unsecured databases on the platform. Uh, Derek Jones, the CTO of Bezop, confirmed the uh, data breach, said that all investors were notified. He also confirmed the fact that the issue had been resolved and the unaffected, uh, or the affected databases had been secured. Despite reassurances, a Twitter user claims to, uh, to have seen the leaked database online as recently as March 30th, uh, months after it had supposedly been secured by Bezop, the uh, cryptocurrency startup insists that the only breach was in January and any new reports were simply old news. It is uh, important to note that the uh, Chrome Tech report confirms the database leak. Another bit of controversy, perhaps the uh, more concerning than the leak itself, is that the leak appears to have been deliberately orchestrated. According to Chrome Tech researchers, changes to, uh, made to the uh, MongoDB protocol makes it impossible for such a mistake to occur accidentally. This means that the database was intentionally configured to be accessible to the public. So John McAfee connection... Uh, the cybersecurities tycoon is one of the uh, one of the investors exposed by the leaked database. He's also listed as an advisor on the uh, Bezop website. McAfee uh, apparently they didn't have McAfee antivirus on in their database, huh? McAfee has previously touted the platform as having the potential to change Amazon in the e-commerce uh, scene. The Bezop uh, Medium post also indicated that uh, McAfee had been paid to promote the platform. Of course, he was. McAfee has more than 800,000 followers on Twitter, charges as much as 105,000 to promote ICOs on his Twitter account. Boy, oh boy, if I could just get 105,000 just to promote ICOs and various coins on my Twitter account, wow. So uh, so there's some reasons I don't like John McAfee. Uh, you know, he's a pretty smart guy, actually. When, when, you, when you watch him in, in, on YouTube and stuff, uh, talking about cryptos, um, he's, he's a fairly smart guy. Um, and he did make, you know, the McAfee antivirus, which worked. However, uh, I hated it when I was growing up. Uh, when I was a teenager, you know, my parents had a computer. And, of course, I had to use that computer to play uh, StarCraft and Diablo 2 and stuff. And the McAfee antivirus software was horrible. 
and it slows down your computer is something awful. So it slows down your computer worse than actually having a virus, which is the most ironic thing I've ever heard, and I hated it. And um, eventually our computer slowed down so badly that I was like, I, I, I convinced I convinced them, my, my folks, to let me reformat it. And the moment they got on it, he's like, wow, that really makes it faster. My, my, uh, my stepfather, he had sort of a 50s kind of, that's just my uh, way of interpreting his, uh, his voice. But either way, he's just like, wow, it's so much faster. But yeah, that's what a reformat does and not having a nasty antivirus on your computer. Uh, that's what that does. Uh, so, welcome to planet Earth, my stepdad. Uh, Chilean anti-monopoly court orders banks to reopen crypto exchanges accounts. So, I made a, uh, a video a little while back, and it actually had this, not this article, but it had an article about uh, Chilean monopolist banks um, not allowing anybody to put money onto exchanges or buy cryptocurrency with it. And it was a huge problem because all of uh, Chile basically couldn't buy any crypto uh, if they used particular banks. Um, and so it wasn't good. And they were all filing appeals or, or courts, uh, yada, yada. They were suing them, essentially. So major Chilean uh, cryptocurrency exchange Buddha has uh, persuaded a court order to, um, to uh, order the reopening of its accounts at two major Chilean banks. Uh, Chile's anti-monopoly court published a ruling on its website ordering that stank a state bank, Banco del Estado de, de, de Chile, and Itau Corp Banca, oh jeez, man, these, these Spanish, uh, Corpa to reopen Buddha's accounts while the exchange's lawsuit continues against 10 banks, including the aforementioned two. Uh, Buddha sued the banks after what, said, uh, what it was said uh, as an unjustified closing of its accounts. Earlier this month, a group of uh, exchanges in Chile uh, filed a legal action against the banks' decision to shut down their accounts. Buddha, Orionix, uh, and crypto markets say that the banking system has uh, taken unilateral action in, Chile's, uh, in Chile that's uh, killing the entire industry. So in an interview with Cointelegraph, Buddha CEO uh, Guillermo uh, Torrielba said that uh, while Chile would like to show itself as open and liberal to, uh, to new technologies, the veneer is thin. Um, so according to Torrielba, uh, despite an outcry in the media and on Twitter, banks refuse to respond. He says that the powerful banking sector is making the environment for cryptocurrency much worse than Ecuador, Bolivia, or China. Torrielba emphasized that there are no laws, rulings, or legislation uh, that uh, prevent crypto firms from opening, from operating normally, rather than the banking sector has taken on the role of a hegemonic regulator. So uh, so it's, it's going good in Chile. So that's pretty good. Uh, you know, Chile isn't, isn't the world power in crypto or anything like that, but I hate seeing banks uh, stop people from buying crypto. Um, the, the reason why is because they're all run by super old men, um, you know, who who can't run a computer, you know, that, that doesn't know, like, what's all this Twitter and this Facebook and this YouTube? I don't know what it all is, uh, but all I know how to do is make a whole bunch of money running a bank. And that's great. All the power to you. <clears throat> but, um, you know, the future is definitely blockchain, whether or not the future is Bitcoin or Litecoin or Ethereum or this coin or that coin. That's uncertain. That's literally all uncertain. And it's even uncertain to me. I am very bullish on crypto. But what I'm even more bullish on is blockchain itself. And when banks aren't turning to blockchain in some way, shape or form, uh, then they're just simply falling behind. Um. So crypto exchange Binance is more profitable than Germany's biggest bank. So it's bigger than Deutsche Bank. Uh, this year in the first quarter of 2018, Deutsche Bank, Germany's biggest bank and one of Europe's leading financial institutions, recorded a profit of 146 million. Binance recorded a profit of 200 million. So Binance surpassed uh, Germany's largest and uh, one of Europe's biggest banks in profitability. Binance, a cryptocurrency startup that uh, was non-existent merely eight months ago, beat out a leading bank that was established 148 years ago. Oh, so much yawning. A startup with 200 employees beat out a, a banking giant with 100,000 employees. Uh, <clears throat> the CEO at Binance, who is better known as uh, to the cryptocurrency space as CZ, Binance is the world's largest cryptocurrency exchange. In the first three months from inception, profits amounted to uh, $7.5 uh, 
and the second quarter profits amounted to 200 million. The third quarter is still in progress and expected to have further growth. Any country that can attract Binance to open a branch in their location will receive a handsome tax income revenue. For Malta, the relocation of Binance from Taiwan to uh, to the European country is a bigger move than the Deutsche Bank permanently re relocating its headquarters and operations from Germany to Malta. Given the exponential growth rate of Binance and the rapid movement of the cryptocurrency market, the motivation of the government of Malta in embracing the cryptocurrency industry and startups within it is quite evident. So um, for anybody that doesn't know, Malta is kind of a, a like a minor tax haven. It's kind of like Switzerland. It's kind of like uh, Gibraltar, maybe like Panama in a way. Um, it is a, an island in the Mediterranean, and uh, it really, really enjoys crypto. It gives people tax breaks. Uh, Binance went there. Um, several other companies go there. Uh, they also have companies in Binance that will create your ICO. So you basically meet with them, you pay them a certain amount of money, and then they make you an ICO, essentially. Uh, so Malta is really, really uh, moving forward in terms of uh, the crypto world. Um, so it's just an island, and it is, uh, I think that's the most dense country in all of Europe. Um, it's quite the sight on Google Earth, that's for sure. The 17th million Bitcoin is about to be mined, what it means and why. Um, so this was an interesting article I wrote. I, I, I read uh, through the majority of it. Um, so when Bitcoin founder Satoshi Nakamoto mined the first Bitcoin block on January uh, 3rd, 2009, he created the first 50 Bitcoins. The reward stayed... The same for another 209,999 blocks when the first halvening or reduction of rewards took place. It didn't come to a surprise. Every 210,000 blocks, according to a hard-coded schedule, the network reduces the block reward by 50%. Following the most recent halvening uh, in July 2016, the reward is 12.5 Bitcoin. So uh, that means that while there are only four Bitcoin left to mine, the uh, network... Uh, four million Bitcoin left to mine. The network will not reach its final supply in anything like the nine years it's taken to get this far. As the halvenings halven, the rate of monetary inflation supply growth slows. Uh, so Bash Company, a, a pseudo-anonymous moderator on the uh, Bitcoin subreddit, has plotted the trajectory of Bitcoin's total supply against its rate of monetary inflation. And so we are yonder. Um... So assuming the Bitcoin protocol remains the same, a new block is mined every 10 minutes on average, and the happening schedule and supply cap are unchanged, the last new Bitcoin will not be mined until May 2140. So the next 20 years, with this in mind, the chart hints at another uncommon talking point when acknowledging the milestone uh, that Bitcoin is programmed to run for a very long time. James Loop, uh, Jameson Loop, LOP, uh, lead infrastructure engineer at uh, wallet provider Akasa, was uh, quick to remind Coindesk that Bitcoins are divisible and that, uh, as such, the smallest part of each Bitcoin could hold seemingly infinite value. He said, While 17 million Bitcoin may sound like a lot, it's incredibly scarce. There won't even be enough for every current millionaire to own a whole Bitcoin. Thankfully, each Bitcoin is divisible into 100 million Satoshis, thus uh, there will always be plenty to go around. Uh, but there are other quirks to the software as well. For one, Bitcoin will never actually reach... Um, 21 million units, partly be, uh, for mathematical reasons, partly because miners have not always claimed the full reward. So on uh, on May 17th, 2011, for example, uh, Midnight Magic claimed a 49.9999 block reward rather than an even 50. Further, to be clear, Bitcoin does not stop mining, running rather, when uh, 21 million Bitcoin are produced. At that point, the idea is that miners would be compensated purely through the fees, which they already collect. Though some scientists have uh, sought to project whether such a market would work in practice. With so many questions left unanswered, if anything, the event serves as yet another reminder of how far Bitcoin has come. And just another how, how far it has to go. Um, so in, in the uh, words of a longtime developer, Adam Back, uh, another million down for to go. So... I will put, uh, you know, as usual, I'll put these links in the description so you can read this whole thing. Uh, it was a little long. I didn't want to read the whole thing live here. Uh, but it just goes to show that Bitcoin will be taking a very long time to actually make 21 million Bitcoins. Um, and when it does, you know, he does raise a good point. And, of course, most people already know this, that 
you know, it is divisible. The bitcoins are divisible. So yes, you know, only only seventeen, only twenty one millionaires can actually own one million bitcoin. That sort of thing, or or whatever. Um, not enough for everybody on the planet. But it is divisible into a hundred million satoshis. So, you know, if Bitcoin in the future, uh, you know, in, in 20 years or something like that, mining is going to be very, very slow. Uh, the next block reward we're going to get in 2020, there's going to be a happening. So right now we're getting 12.5 uh, Bitcoin per block. And most blocks are found, of course, on pools. Almost nobody solo mines anymore. But... Uh, you know, so if you're mining in a pool and there's there could be thousands or tens of thousands of people mining and who knows how much hash power into that pool. And when you get a little bit, you just get a little bit. And, you know, an S9 miner, you know, gets you uh, 50, maybe 15 bucks a day. Again, as I said earlier, and I got to look it up because it changes all the time based on the price and difficulty, etc. Um you know, so maybe 15 bucks a day if you have a, an S9 miner right now. When the price was really high, it was like 30, 40 bucks a day. It depends. It varies greatly. Um, and as it gets, so the next one, you know, 12.5 blo per block, it's going to be, you know, 6.25 per block. And that's that's huge. So that's going to create an, an even more scarcity for miners and traders and, and users alike, which will raise the price. Uh, the last happening happened in 2016. And the price didn't really change very quickly. It, it actually took a few months for that price to really start going up. So in 2020, when the halvening occurs, likely we'll see another price increase and uh, so on. <clears throat> Uh, so uh, I just want to talk about this one real quick. So more than uh, 140 million in Bitcoin moved from Mt. Gox uh, wallets. So 16,000 Bitcoins uh, tied to the now defunct Bitcoin exchange Mt. Gox were moved on Thursday. According to Crypto Ground, which monitors Mt. Gox's remaining wallets, the Bitcoins were removed from four separate addresses in increments of approximately 2,000 with zero Bitcoin remaining in each wallet that the funds were extracted from. The wallets are under control of the exchange's bankruptcy trustee, Kobayashi, a Tokyo lawyer who also revealed in March that he had sold 400 million in Mt. Gox Bitcoin and Bitcoin Cash in September of 2017, uh, which, again, it just changes all the time. Now he's like, no, I sold those in, in September. Then it was, no, 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 I sold them over the counter over the course of a few months. Everybody thinks he sold it on an exchange, which totally destroyed the price uh it's just a total mess at this point additional network data indicates a trustee holding a bitcoin cash around the move with 16,000 bch uh, being sent over the course of four transactions good uh bomb that bch it's such a joke kobayashi is tasked with liquidating the the tokens on behalf of B uh, mount gox uh, creditors most of whom uh, have not recovered their funds after the exchange closed its trading operations in 2014 yet the process hasn't been without controversy given that the value of Bitcoins uh, held by Mt. Gox exceeds the amount claimed by the exchange's creditors. Uh, so again, with BCH, it's it's like the one crypto that I'm completely biased against. Um, so Bitcoin is a consensus coin. Uh, the core is the consensus. Uh, so, you know, keep that word in your head, consensus. So if, if the consensus of everybody and all the hash power and the price of Bitcoin lowered when, when Bitcoin Cash was, was created, lowered less than Bitcoin Cash. Uh, all the hash power went to Bitcoin Cash. All the money went to Bitcoin Cash. The market cap went to Bitcoin Cash. Then Bitcoin Cash would be the Bitcoin, essentially, right? Because consensus, but it's not. It's clearly and utterly, absolutely, just hands down, consensus is not. Bitcoin kept its market cap. Bitcoin kept its hash power, everything. Just like uh, Ethereum and Ethereum Classic. Ethereum split. There was Ethereum Classic. Some developers wanted to stay on the Classic. And then uh, uh, Buterin, whatever, uh, wanted to go with the new Ethereum. And that is what we use today, Ethereum. Uh, and then there's Ethereum Classic, which doesn't hold on to the market cap, doesn't hold on to the hash power, um, so that would be like saying, hey, yes, I believe, I personally believe, I'm one person and I believe that Ethereum Classic is the real Ethereum, so we're all going to call it Ethereum. It doesn't work like that. It's consensus. Um, 
So hopefully uh, that doesn't cause a big problem. Although only 140 million now. You see, now, that I know that's a joke. Like, oh, only 140 million. But compared to 400 million, uh, and, be, and compared to the billions of coins that they still have, uh, it is not that much. Uh, so looking back at coin market cap here as a last um, Sia coin uh, gifto, uh, doing really good. Mithril doing really good as well. Uh, ontology of course doing really good as well that is a great coin to get it into for 2018 uh, let's check out some losers storm coin uh, storm was the one that had that uh, 150 percent increase in a day and everybody was all excited about it and i'm just sitting back going you know this is just a pump and dump right and sure enough a few hours later boom it just dumped down so uh sorry for the losers on that one but if you don't even recognize the name of the coin um and nobody does it's just a pump and dump so i hope you guys enjoyed this episode and as usual i will see you guys next time